talked in so long. It's been two weeks since we've done an actual official live chat because the first one that I did when I was coming to New Orleans, I was getting sick with the flu and I couldn't figure out for the life of me why I couldn't concentrate, why my head was so foggy because my, my physical body, like I didn't feel it yet. And while I was doing that, ch that chat, I like all of my energy was so low and I just couldn't, I couldn't. And then I took that night and I fell asleep. That's all. You guys, if you were there for it, you remember I was like, all I want to do right now is go to bed. All I want to do is go to sleep. And I had no reason for it. The next day I got like pulmoned, if that's the right word, by the flu. And I, I literally spent like seven days in my bed, which is not like me. I'm a Virgo. We're very productive. We're always doing the most. I don't like being still. So that was just my body's way of being like, Jess, I know you think that you feel good right now. I know that mentally you want to be able to do this, but also your body needs to rest. That's another thing too is that outside of the fact when you're making changes in your life, but when you're in an environment like New Orleans where mentally you ha you're making changes, physically you're making changes, but spiritually your spiritual self is vulnerable to the energy, these new energies, especially in the French Quarter. I live in the French Quarter. Um, I'm spending a lot of my time in the French Quarter. I've already been bumping into some of you guys while I'm out and about on the street or, you know, my people who are in New Orleans. Um, yeah, it's just, and also what's going on astrologically right now is very intense, energetically. And there's, it just made me very um, susceptible to get sick and that was the first thing. Normally that's kind of like um, what happens across the board. Do you guys hear that? That's Franklin playing with a bottle cap. <laughs> He's so cute right now. Which makes me happy because he also has been very um, lethargic lately. He's been very, like, needy, very emotional, my little puppy. Anyways, you guys, um, Megan Ware says, does living in the French Quarter zap your energy? Heavy, heavy. The energy here is heavy. My mom and I were just talking about this. If you either love New Orleans or you hate it, it either works with your energy or works against it. I, I don't um, have any, like, there's a very dense uh, energy here as far as, as far as what it comes with spirit and also the type of people that are here. I think that's one of, that's a, uh, my understanding of why there's such a large um, population of people who end up becoming drifters and they navigate to New Orleans, they find themselves in New Orleans. Um, people who are alcoholics or have drug ad um, addictions, um, highly psychic people, highly sensitive people, and also people who want to drink, you know what I mean, and have a good time, because when you have this, like, intense energy in general, it brings the good, it brings the light, it brings the dark, and is New Orleans, the French Quarter specifically, every corner of every house is haunted in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to walk through the streets and be like, there's something different about this city. In fact, they have signs on the houses that are up for sale that says this house is haunted, this house isn't, because New Orleans is known for the type of spirit activity that it has. Um, since my, the place that I'm living in now has a history to it, but I'm not going to say the history of it because I don't want to get like stalked. It's not good for me to put out my location, my home address, just like you wouldn't do it on the internet. Um, everything has a history to it, but I do not feel negatively impacted by the city or the spirits here yet, knock on wood. And, um... I just operate from a space of love and light. I'm, I spend too much time with my angels and my guides and higher power in general for me to be impacted by anything negative yet, knock on wood. I've gone to drum circles where yesterday I went to a drum circle. One of the girls got possessed. I didn't tell my mom this, but one of the girls, because um, <clears throat> we didn't have time, I saw that Astro Live chat, but one of the girls got possessed there. And the I'm not saying that I, but if you are not careful... Um, and if you don't know your boundaries, if you don't know when to tap out, I feel like you're very open and susceptible to have not psychic attack, but for things to latch onto you, things to leech onto you and to, you know, do what it is that they will to you. And especially if you're a sensitive, um, you know, I just did a reading with someone like a, a two hours ago and he was like saying how Napoleon I had to go check out the spot where Napoleon was there and Napoleon is this like tiny little 
little man, but has a lot of power to him, and he's co loved, uh, covered in, uh, he's like loves, loves bees, and he wears a bee charm. You guys know I love bees, and I have my bee charm, and I just found that so symbolic. The reason why I'm saying that is just because I'm five feet, 100 pounds, doesn't mean that my spirit isn't strong, and that I should, you know, I'm still human at the end of the day, so I'm not, you know, um, uh, I'm still vulnerable to anything that I can, you know, open myself up to. But for at the same time, like, I don't think that I'm, you know, my, my spirit in itself is strong in its love and its light and compassion and strength that I, I, I you know, people don't, know, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But either way is don't fuck with me. But at the same time, like, if you do, like, I am protected and there's too much good going on in me, within me, around me for it to come through. When it comes to the girl who got possessed, uh, let me say this. I feel <clears throat> she's okay now. She is. She was okay then, but, I mean, when you have a bunch of people in that, that area, the Congo, the Congo Square, and we're all honoring our ancestors, and the drums are beating, I mean, my first time with this drum circle, um... I had to back out for a minute um, to sit down because I felt like I was going to lose control of myself and just have a total release of like spirits within me. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. And it does feel like you just completely lose awareness. You just don't think. And my logical brain, I was just having a conversation with someone about this yesterday. But my logical brain, as a Virgo, and as a shy person, I don't want to embarrass myself. I know that I wouldn't be embarrassing myself, but when you lose, like when you're so open to that energy, and when you're, the drums are moving through you, and spirit is moving through you, and like it's so easy for you if you're not, 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 not that you're not careful, but if you're not, you have to be ready to completely let go, and when you do, it's almost like a little possession and like an emotional release. And that's what happened to this girl yesterday. So, um, and I felt it. I just looked at her from across the, I was standing next to her actually, which is funny. But I was standing next to her initially and then for a while and I could see her like, like she was, the drums were really speaking to her and spirit was really speaking to her. And I intuitively actually went to the opposite side of the circle, not even realizing that she was about to like completely have, like get completely taken over and then so I was I went to the ground and I was banging on the ground and like with my hands and um <laughs> hey lies Haley's heavily meditated says you look flushed are you okay girl this is my blush <laughs> but thank you I am okay um so I went to the I was at the opposite side and I was pounding on the ground with my fists you know, because the drumming and everything like that. And normally I'm the one who's jam dancing around and stuff. And I looked over at her and she was like, you, she was completely out of it. She was gone. And I looked over at her and I could, she just wasn't like here. She wasn't vacant. Like she was vacant. She wasn't present with us. And all of her emotion, I'm surprised she didn't like throw up or something because that's another thing that can happen too is you just feel like, or you feel like you start spinning. Um, she just had this like vacant look in her eyes and it, she was just going through it. And like, you just, uh, for me, what I personally do is I just push my hands out and like give support, give support. And the more that you drum, the more that they lose it, the more that they lose control. So I stayed in my space looking at her. I just wanted to cry out for her. I wanted to cry and release. And that's another thing too, like, <clears throat> like, I don't want to talk about that because I will definitely have a breakdown, but just the things that people feel every day um, that they don't even realize that it is that they're holding onto their chest and they're holding onto their heart. Um, some of the places, the buildings, the energy that they have, those are things that I will say impact me if I, you know, um, feel it. The drum circle, every time I go into the drum circle, I want to cry. But I, I, I also think that 
Um, Strangest Frame says, was she under the influence of anything? No, she wasn't. She was not under the influence of anything. You could tell. She was in a good state of mind. It's, it just jumps. It jumps. Meanwhile, like a week before that or two weeks before that when I was in the jump circle, I felt the same thing that she did, but where you feel this takeover of your body. I'm not, I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed. I don't even drink alcohol. And it's just when you're in that space, when you're in that environment, you become very vulnerable. And it's, I don't want to say that it's like a spirit, but it's like the spirits within you or this hurt, this ache, it comes from different things. Um, yeah, so, and the purpose of that, someone just asked, like, what was the purpose of the drum circle? I thought the first one was to honor our ancestors and um, to connect and to build energy up and also to release. And, but this one, this was Marie Laveau's drum circle, well, to honor Marie Laveau, it was a blessing, um, blessing on our bodies. I received a blessing under the ancestral tree. Um, <clears throat> there was also a blessing of the drums. But there's a lot of emotion. That space in general, like Congo Square, is so, honestly, it's like sacred ground, if you ask me. Um because of the amount of emotion that goes into, I don't know why I get, I, I mean, I know why I get emotional about it, but the amount of emotion and pain that is pushed into that soil goes so deep to our ancestors here, especially African Americans and our connection to Africa and the things that have happened to people, like the sacrifices that they have made on for us so those types of things. In fact, anytime I come to New Orleans, that's one of the first spirits that I usually feel is the spirit of slaves, the spirit of, of African-American people, Africans too, and um, people from the Caribbean. My family's from the Caribbean. I spent a lot of time, we're supposed to be talking about Astro Live, but I'm, I want to talk about this now. But I spent a lot of my time growing up kind of not embarrassed by my roots, but not accepting it and not interested in hearing about Jamaica and like the Caribbean and my family and now my family and um, like ancestors and connecting with um, my ancestors are things that's really important to me. <clears throat> so I think that's one of the reasons why I came, why one of the reasons why I've come to New Orleans. Um, when it comes to Hurricane Katrina, like Precious Gift is saying right now, when it comes to Hurricane Katrina and the things that have happened to people here when they lost their lives, if you look on the map like of New Orleans, like you have the Bywater area, and the Bywater area wasn't flooded at all, but a block away from Bywater was the 7th Ward, which was, I'm sorry, the 9th Ward, which was completely taken over and um, by floods and like what happened to those people being left there abandoned and the images of Hurricane Katrina like if you do your research and if you dig a little deeper um, the images that we got because I remember when Hurricane Katrina hit and I remember watching the news the images that we received at least from what I saw watching it not obsessively but being involved and interested in it from afar when I was in Philadelphia they don't, they don't, they're not an exact representation of what has actually happened here and the amount of lives that were lost and how those, the conditions of the people that were living here. And it's argue, like, it's arguable, arguable, is that the right word? But you can argue whether or not they would have been, those people would have been made more of a priority um, if their skin color would have been different. And that's another thing, too, that I'm exploring a lot while I'm down here in New Orleans is you know, being, being black, being a black person and our roots and what that means for me and how that impacts me and me as a woman, me as an individual, me as an independent, and then also me understanding my magic and my power and going through it. Essence Janelle says, hey Jess, I received my Pluto oil in the mail today, thank you. <laughs> Speaking of death and transformation, am I right? <laughs> um... Yeah, New Orleans is an incredible city. It's been amazing so far. I realized, too, when I came down here, like, as much as in Philadelphia I'm known for knowing, like, you know, the most, I guess, and being a guru of astrology and stuff like that, which in some ways I am, but not to, like, toot my own horn, but how, how many years have I studied this and I'm still learning every day, but I come to New Orleans and there's different types of magic. 
There's different types of gifts. There's different type of skill levels here. And everybody has their own way. That's why I'm seeing, like, if you walk the streets, you see people who are lost. And you see them being very gifted individuals who got lost. And that's very real. And that happens to so many people without me going off on a tangent. But I remember being in school, being a sensitive, being put in gifted classes, and being called ADHD or being called, you know, she's so smart, you know, put her in gifted programs, but at the same time, me not living up to my potential. And sensitives, just like you and I, and we have gifts and stuff, but in the right environment, we're not supported. Luckily for me, I had support of my mom, who believed in my gifts and gave me the research, you know, gave me the tools and the resources to kind of, you know, listen, like, listen to myself. My mom would always ask me, like, how does this make you feel? What do you think? How do you feel? What do you feel from this? Do you feel anything here? What does this feel like for you? And essentially what it was that she was teaching me was to honor my, my intuition. And I can look on the street and see people who are addicted to drugs and addicted to alcohol, um, just complete drifters. I can see them being creatives and them just not having the same support that I did and how that could happen to any single one of us. And that's why it's really important, again, that we have these groups to let you guys know that you're not fucking crazy, that your experiences that you are experiencing are real AF, and that we, at least for me, that was one of the reasons why I came down to New Orleans, is to um, give you guys more education, for me to focus, for me to focus on you, for me to focus on myself, um, and to learn as much as I can while I have the time here on Earth, and then hopefully pass on something special to my children. So, um, yeah, y'all ready for Astro Live chat? <laughs> oh my God. Um, one thing that I do have to say before I get involved in Astro Live chat even further, or at least get started, we're 20 minutes in, um, is make sure for those of you guys who are a part of this, make sure that you're following um, Bahati Life on Facebook. I've been way more active on Facebook and also on Twitter because I now have the time to be able to be there for you and to communicate with you guys on that level, and I'm so freaking grateful for that. Um, so if you're not following on Facebook, at first it was kind of like a recycling of what it was I was putting on Instagram, but I almost feel myself um, moving towards Facebook and Twitter lately to give you guys more as far as us having an ongoing conversation and also having a, a more community. So just go ahead and search um, Bahati Life on Facebook if you want to be a part of that. I've actually been able to respond to tweets. Um, um, actual messages and stuff like that are really tough for me to get to because I just, you know, the messages kind of pour in. But when it's on Facebook and on our Facebook group, you know what I mean? There's other people that you can connect with. Again, like Bahati Life is the name of my apothecary. Bahati Life is the name of my brand. But the reason why I started this was because I wanted a community, a sense of a tribe for not only me to talk about these things, but for other people to go and be like, I'm not alone or tell me what's going on in my life. I want more meaning. Even myself, I'm constantly striving for more for myself. I'm kind of constantly find, like striving for a deeper purpose within my life. And for me, astrology is the answer to that in a lot of ways. And then understanding like what's going on in the environment. And then also it feels really fucking good to come on and talk to you guys and say, um, <clears throat> for me to come on and, you know, say, hear you guys say like, Jess, this is what I'm going through. And I'd be like, look, I can relate to that, and this is what you do. So, um, the Captain Nomad says, so for the person mentioning their dark side, the point is to acknowledge what it is first and figure out how to connect with it and then devise a way to constructively let it out. Hope that helps. Yeah. Um, when it comes to dark sides of the self, number one, all of us have them. You know, especially, like, people get shocked when they meet me, and they're like, oh my god, I thought you were going to be, like, this little light fairy. Um, and then you meet me when I'm, like, I'm, like, straight up Kali Ma. <laughs> like, blowing fire and smoke out of my nose and out of my mouth. So, 
there's two sides to everything and also shadow sides like um you know your your inner demons and what those look like and how well you play with them and whatever so Beth Mail app says I'm currently at the airport waiting to board my flight. Girl, I'm sending you good vibes and a safe flight. And I also set the intention that your entire flight, that it be something that's like this little like spa shuttle, like a spa sleep shuttle, where you're just kind of rocketing through the space and rocketing through the sky. And basically this is just your time to reconnect, to disconnect, and to have rest and peace and that it be restorative and um, a good flight for you. All right. Um, the other thing that I'm also wanted to say to you guys uh, before we dive in is um, make sure that you're following the YouTube channel as well because I'm going to be cranking out now that I'm finally healthy. Woo! Honestly, ugh, my flu was so, like, it had me down, you guys. And I, I, I had it planned that I would start filming as soon as one of my friends left because she came in. And I wanted to film, and then I got sick, and there was no way that I could film. So this is the first week where it's going to be on and popping. And, um, yeah, so we're going to be diving in. And then we're, I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing an astrology series on my YouTube for free. I'm not kidding. So we're going to be really diving into astrology on my YouTube. And that was something that I was really trying to like grapple with. Do I charge to talk, teach about astrology? And I'm not going to. I would charge to talk about tarot and to teach tarot within the sacred um, circle. But when it comes to YouTube, we're going in and I'm going to give you guys a lot as far as um, learning astrology, astrology basics, how I learned, what, how you can learn how you can grow the most, and the more that you're engaged, the more that you'll get out of it. Ask me questions. If there's something that doesn't make sense to you, ask it that way, because if you're thinking it, chances are someone else is thinking it, and also my brain operates from like here. So sometimes I forget that if I say something like, you know, sun square this, that if I'm saying square that that might not make sense to everyone else. So if you ask the question, do not think that you're being stupid or that it's a dumb question. There is no such thing. If you have the question in your head, ask it on the YouTube channel to put it out there so that I can then film another video and then answer it, especially now that I'm here in New Orleans. Okay, my loves? So, um, hi, Isa. I see you. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, speaking of jump circle, right? Um, but... Yeah, sorry, I'm looking at my comments. Kayla Edwards says, thank you, sweet baby Jesus. Um, Lady of Opulence says, what's your YouTube channel? I'm going to give you one guess. <laughs> what do you think my YouTube channel would be? Uh, I'm not being a smart ass, but I'm just guessing. Ooh, so someone says, can you do the video on the South, North, and South notes? Absolutely. That's actually one of my favorite things to talk about, and that's something that we're going to be talking about today. And my YouTube uh, channel, if you ever search it, is just simply Bahati Life. It's Bahati Life across the board, okay? And I love you for asking that question. That's not a stupid question at all either. What's my YouTube channel? But my YouTube channel is Bahati Life. Okay, that being said, oh my god, Venus is retrograde, you guys. Oh! <laughs> you know what really pisses me off about the fact that Venus is currently retrograde is that once she goes direct and I understand I understand you guys know that I say when you work with the planets that they will work with you but I will say that they have my panties in a bunch right now full disclosure and not literally but metaphorically I'm kind of irritated but it is what it is not irritated but I'm like oh Venus and retrograde I see you girl um, but as soon as she goes direct, Mercury is going to go retrograde, like literally two days afterwards or a day before that. And the thing is, is that when a planet is, go is goes retrograde on a certain day, that doesn't mean shit. You want to know why? Because the energy of that planet has already started influencing it days before. So if Mercury is to go retrograde on, let's pretend, um, October the 5th then you best believe that a week before October the 5th, you are going to be feeling the influence of Mercury. So what we have, you guys, is this energetic overlapping. Now, 
can we all take a moment to validate and to recognize that I said this from the jump? Meanwhile, the entire internet was saying 2018 is going to be our year. 2018 is going to be the year of, you know, everything's going to come together. Everything is going to manifest. I did not. I have never said that. I have never said that. I did say that 2018 was going to be the year of insane transformation. And that take that how, how you will, but it's going to test you. It's going to make you. It's going to break you. But as far as it coming to manifestation, it's not that easy. It's not that effortless. There's so much that we need to do and to experience in order to get into that space of, like, growth. Meanwhile... The rest of the internet was saying, oh, you know, the next three months or the next year is going to be the year of these things coming together. But no one, the, the skies, the cosmos never promised that. That was never written in the stars. And we can see that even as we look at politics and changes that are going on in our environment, changes that are going on around us, changes that are going on within us. I have never said, see, someone has my name already says, <laughs> that's a really good Instagram, says you were on track, you were on the mark completely. I will never freaking lie to you guys. If I said to you every day, if I made a post every day and said, what, your wish is right around the corner, it's manifesting right now as we speak, then I would get a thousand, how many followers and how many likes because I'm constantly putting out this positive affirmation when in reality, there are so many planets throughout this year. And I know because I worked on a project from last year to look at this year to see what this year was going to look like. And I could see that this year was going to be all about this insane transformation in ways that I couldn't even predict for my own personal life. I could see the energy there, but that's the thing about astrology, is that you can see the environment. You can It's almost like a plane flying into a storm. You know that the potential for turbulence is very, very high, but you don't know how intense it's going to be or how light it's going to be or maybe the winds might shift or maybe the winds won't impact your plane at that moment in time, but the plane that's right behind you might be like... rocking all over and then the next plane it's like everyone's just like hi yes can I have a coke please and then they like take a nap and they have like the smoothest flight um yeah so um t uh someone just asked um will 2019 be easier not for I'm not gonna say that easy is not the right word babe like it's not to say that 28 like Easy is not the right word, but I will say that half of twenty, half of 2019, moving into the late portion of 2019, 20, the late portion of 2019 seems to be a little bit more, I mean, it's tough because especially with our politics right now, our politics and our government and the world as we know it is in, is like getting seriously attacked. Um... But when it comes to your personal life, um, it's, it's like, I calm me down in some areas, but like lifting up in others, like it's almost like some person throws a grenade over here, but this area is kind of like calm. That's what I see for 20, for 2019. Um, that's a good way of saying it. Mary Liz um, underscore N says the pressure is released a little bit. It is. It really is. Because, and then think like. And I don't want to say that this is going to be like things just kind of falling into place when it comes to like, oh my God, this something manifested. It's almost like it feels the challenges that we're going through now create the opportunity for what we want, what we need to kind of manifest. But it's not as easy. It doesn't feel as pretty as we would expect it to feel. Just for example, like sometimes we look at manifestation as oh, I'm this beautiful flower blooming, and look how pretty I am. Look at my petals. Look at my leaves. Look at the sun and the fresh air and the honeybee. But it, so we look at, sometimes we want to look at manifestation and things coming together in that way. A lot of times, eight times out of ten, manifestation and things coming together is other things getting ripped apart. And that's why I'm saying it's not going to be, when you say easy, 
it's what you want, but it's not how you would expect it to be, is what I'm saying. Okay, my loveys? Um, so anyways, let's talk about Venus retrograde. So Venus um, is a planet, and she's currently moving to the sign of Scorpio. If you see me looking off in this direction, um, Guava Berry Kisses says, please post this live. The signal keeps breaking up, and I'm missing crucial parts, and it sucks. I hear you, babe. I will post this after live chat, actually, on my YouTube channel, Bahati Life. And we are top live. Um, but, okay, so Venus is moving to the sign of Scorpio. Sun is moving to the sign of Scorpio. Jupiter is moving to the sign of Scorpio. Mercury is moving to the sign of Scorpio. And basically what we have is really intense energy here. And what this is, is a moment. It's the universe, the cosmos, saying... Um, look, again, I've been saying this multiple times, but we don't want you to stay superficial level. And there's certain areas of your life that need profound change and transformation. And there's certain areas of your life that need you to feel something, to feel a certain way in order for you to feel uncomfortable so that you can then address this and make it more than what it is currently. So it's almost like looking at the status quo and saying, this is not, you know, serving of you. This doesn't serve a purpose. Um, this is too light. This is superficial. Yes, it looks good on the internet. Yes, it looks good on Instagram. But as far as your soul purpose, as far as actual intimate connection, what is that? Your relationships are going to absolutely get tested. Your work, your career, how you do your work, how you take care of yourself. Because what the cosmos are saying now, and I feel this for myself, it's almost like this honest assessment that needs to happen where it's you looking into, you kind of isolating yourself and sitting in this like closet. That's the image that I get, is this person who's kind of sitting in this dark ass closet and being like, this is the reality. This is what this is. And if it's too light, if it doesn't serve a purpose, maybe it's not that it doesn't, but maybe there's certain areas of that relationship or certain areas of that job that like need to be taken to the next level of connection, of purpose and meaning. So let's say you are, you know, you own a business and or let's say you're doing this one job or you're a manager of something. And you have these, you start, when this starts happening, and it's happening within your 10th house or your 6th house, your 10th house of career, your 6th house of day-to-day -day service, like, let's pretend it's the 6th house, what you're going to start seeing is fights within the work environment. And as a manager, you're seeing all of these employees, and your beautiful, positive-looking self can see the positive aspects of your client, of your employees, and, and see the best in them, but in reality... Come, babe. Come, come here. I got snackies. Franklin, come. Give me snackies. Come. Snackies. So anyways, I'm sorry. So you can look at your... Oh, you just took the snacky. <laughs> you can look at your employees and be like... Don't do it. You can look at your employees and see the best in them, but in reality, it's like, what do they actually give? What, ser what purpose do they actually serve? And the universe is stripping away these weakened people, and it has, it's nothing personal. It's just that there is something else better. So when that person gets fired, and when you as a manager are pushed to get rid of certain people and to get rid of certain things because fights are breaking out or money is getting lost from the drawer and no one can understand why or no one knows why, you start canceling people out and taking an honest assessment, then you rehire new people, you have a better team, you have a better business, you're making more money, life gets easy, easier, you start um, making different friends because the people that you've hired are actually a better fit for you and they're actually friends outside of work and you're like, why was I holding on to this original team when the weekend spots needed to be, <laughs> I hear you guys um, making fun of me saying snacky, but anyways, um, what I, what you guys are, what is happening is your, your team 
whoever is on your side that you think is for your highest and greatest good or you think it doesn't get any better than this, when it starts, when you start being asked to re-examine, it's not to say that this is all or nothing, that this is cut and dry, this gets removed out completely and this gets whatever, and it's not going to be replaced, it's to say that the universe understands there's this divine order that needs to happen and the best thing to do is to respect it, to honor it. And to take a step back and to be like, okay, I see that this is not working out. Let me, uh, let me open up to the idea that the potential of this being transformed and this being transitioned. Um, that's the same thing that happens with relationships. So when Venus is going retrograde, when Venus is retrograde in the sign of Scorpio, our relationships are being tested, not because it's like the universe is like, ha ha ha, I want to see you suffer, but the universe is saying, look. This is what you want, and you want to take this um, connection to a deeper level of intimacy. But that means if you have, if you're going to do that, you have to be vulnerable. You have to talk about your feelings. You have to talk about the things that scare you. You have to put yourself in a position that makes you uncomfortable. You have to have conversations that are very difficult. What is it that you want? What is it that I want? Where do you see us going from here? What is missing from our relationship? When we have sex, how does it make you feel? Like these are serious conversations that are not easy to talk about, but they need to be addressed in order for you guys to better understand each other. And the same thing is true when it comes to your career and your work. Um, when I do this, this is what happens. Why? Is this constructive? Is this good? Is this beneficial to me? And if not, it has to get removed. The crazy thing is, is that Scorpio naturally rules genitalia and also our like our, our bowels. So what we have here is the ability to receive pleasure through our genitalia for the most part, and our ability to create, and then also through our bowels, the, the energy of release and to push out literal ex excrement. So that's the energy of Scorpio. There is the ability to create and to take things to the next level through intimacy, through orgasm, or we have to release certain things. That's the energy of eighth house and Scorpio matters across the board. That's what we're dealing with right now. So now we're talking about energy and this crosses across all, all, all walks of life. It, walk, it, it steps into um, what are we creating? What are we connecting? What is making our lives, like taking our lives to the climax? And then also what needs to simultaneously be released and let go of? Because it's waste. It's not, it doesn't serve a purpose. What are you going to hold on to the poop in your butt? <laughs> no, but seriously. Think about that. If there's, <laughs> if there's certain things that are, um, that are in your life right now that don't serve a purpose, you have to poop them out. <laughs> that's Scorpio energy, right? So you guys, I know that that's a funny metaphor, but I'm being honest with you, okay? So when Venus moves out of the sign of Scorpio, which she's doing, and she's going to move into the sign of Libra, um, I think on Wednesday. Yeah, Halloween. So she's moving out of the sign of Scorpio, and during that time, this was, okay, this is making me... This is taking me to the next level of, ex of experience and pleasure. And like 1982 XO Yo says, shit it out, literally, on this side, this is what I'm releasing. This is what I'm letting go of in the form of a fart or a poop. I'm just kidding. I'm being juvenile right now. I'm sorry. It's my, my silliness is here. Um, so we're going through this area of relationships being tested, intimacy being tested, what do we have to hold on to, what do we let go, if we hold on to it, then how can we understand it, it's almost like, this is a really good metaphor, so this is TVMA right now, but think about like the female orgasm, like how complex it is, where, and again, why the female orgasm? Because we're working with Scorpio energy here, and I'm working with Scorpio metaphors, because that's the best way to describe this. I'm not being a pervert right now. I'm talking about astrology. I'm talking about energy. So think about the female orgasm and how difficult it is to understand, but it's something that is attainable. It's something that we strive towards for most, for some people. So, or just orgasms in general. 
but you have this seed of something that it is that you're working with, but you have to better understand it in order to take it to the next level so that it can climax. And maybe it's not just a female orgasm, but just orgasms in general. There's a chemistry that needs to happen or things that need to be understood in order for this to happen. It's the mind, it's spiritual, it's mental, it's physical. It's all these intricate things in order to create this magical moment. That's ultimately what is happening in your life. So you have something here that you're working with, but it's up to you to understand it, to probe into it, to ask it questions, to get intimate internally, emotionally, physically. Come here, baby. Franklin, come have snackies. Wait, am I rewarding him for bad behavior right now? I think I am. Good job for coming here. Bad time for me to say that. Um, yeah, so Dee and Kali says that's some next level stuff, Jess. I mean, I have so many pearls of wisdom that I want to share with you guys, but uh, yeah. Mira Tamira says, I'm loving the way you're breaking this down. Yes. Needlework by Don Donzel says, agreed, great analogies. I'm really good with my metaphors for the most part. Um, for the most part. That's just my Virgo mind. Come. If you can't explain things in a way that is simple, then I feel like you don't understand it. I've heard that quote before and I was like, that makes sense. If I can't explain this to a six-year-old, which technically I wouldn't be talking about the female orgasm with a six-year-old, but if I can't explain it to someone who's, you know, simple, then I don't understand the material. And I understand this material. So um Kayla Edwards says, I've seen a lot of breakups this retrograde. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You're gonna see a lot of breakups. You wanna know why? Because excrement. Um, honestly, Venus rules relationships, love, beauty, aesthetic, money, things that are valuable to us, things that are tangible. And when she goes retrograde, every single one of us falls under this shadow of, is this really important to me? Do I really love this? Do I really want this? Does this make sense? Does this feel good? Does this make me feel good? And if it doesn't, if you have second guesses or questions about it, then you, Scorpio vibe, you poop it out. You get rid of it. It's all of a sudden it's shit to you. Like all of a sudden it's like, this doesn't serve me. I don't, you know, I don't want this anymore. Or maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> I'm constipated. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what Venus retrograde is currently doing. Now, Venus is going to move into the sign of Libra. You guys have got me talking about poop now. Yeah, someone says, I just broke up with my boyfriend of four years. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know why someone's screaming about cheating. If you've ever cheated on someone, then you can go fuck yourself. Sorry. I'm just kidding. I understand why some people cheat, but don't come on my Instagram and brag about that if that's what you're doing right now. But I might not have read that correctly. But I just don't think that it's, I don't think that, I don't know what you're, okay. Hmm. Okay. So. Um, let me read this again because I want to make sure that I'm getting this right because I don't like people bragging. I hit up my that I cheated on and miss what we valued. Who is this person screaming at me? Why are you yelling? Don't do it. Like, I'm not in the mood. You have no idea how much I'm not in the mood for people yelling right now. Okay. I'm not going to search for this comment, but, um, let me find out that you guys are being inappropriate or breaking up. Um, or make like uh, exalting behavior that's disrespectful to others and I will freaking curse you alright I'm not even kidding you've cursed yourself if you're being negative like if you're if you're putting out bad vibes to other people or being disrespectful to people and not honoring people's feelings you've put a curse on yourself don't do that to yourself Mazi Mouse says <laughs> I'm freaking crazy I'm not kidding um, but yeah, no, I honestly, like, you guys are telling me to ignore the dummies or ignore the negative people. Most oftentimes I will, but let me just say, because I feel like whoever this person is, if you're going to come on and make, and like, make fun of the fact that you are toying with another person's hearts and emotions by cheating on them, you're fucking low energy. Like, your energy is so low and you need help. Like, you need love. You need 
time for yourself. You need to understand that the energy that you put out there comes right back to you. If you're toying around with people's emotions, people's hearts, and you know that you're doing this, and you intentionally keep doing that, what you don't realize is that you're creating this huge web. And I don't want to block them because I want them to hear it. Like, you're creating this web for yourself. And the thing is, as witches and as people who set intention and people who work magic, we understand that what you put out there comes back to bite you in the ass. And what's going to happen is that if, it does, if you don't feel it now, you're going to feel it at some point. And it's the, the level of regret and remorse that you will feel from treating someone like they're not a human and that they don't deserve respect and love is going to, not only is that going to be the worst punishment that you have to live with for the rest of your life, but the karma of that, when you actually want to put yourself, your heart out there and connect with another person and have intimacy with another person and have someone there for you, God forbid you got sick. God forbid you were broke. God forbid your family passed. All of your family passed. God forbid all of your friends said, fuck you, Jim, or whoever your name is, and left you in the dirt. And you had no one to turn to but that one person that you messed, that you screwed over because you cheated. You are going to have to sit with yourself in isolation and look at what you have created. So normally what I would do is I would block someone that brings in that negative energy. But what I want you to do right now is to fucking hear like the reality of the curse that you are putting on yourself by being disrespectful, by toying with people's hearts intentionally. So come on my Instagram and brag about how you cheat, how you drag people in the dirt. And I can... Well, all you're doing right now is broadcasting all of the bad juju that you have willingly spoke all over your life. And that is what you have to live with. So if you're trying to distract me, you're not distracting me. If anything, it's acting as an example of how we're all striving for better, how we're all doing better. And I want you to make a conscious decision right now to make better choices for your life so that you can... Hopefully, by the grace of God, maybe counteract half of what you've done to someone else. Do you want a snacky? Don't come on my Instagram bragging about cheating on people and dragging them in the dirt. I will drag you in the dirt. You've cursed yourself so hard. It's a shame. And like, and that's another thing, too. In today's times, in today's society, they're singing all the time about being disrespectful and drag, like, never honoring each other, never honoring their heart. And they live cold, isolated lives and meaningless lives and wondering why, like, they're abandoned, wondering why there's no one there and they have superficial relationships because the energy that you put out there is so shallow and harsh especially in the times that we're walking into, the last thing you need to do is be another one of those scumbags. That's the last thing you need to do in today's times. If you're not striving for better, if you're not striving to be a person of love and light, you are part of the problem and you're fucking yourself up every single day. That is the reality. Mm. Okay. Venus moving out of Mars, I'm sorry, Venus moving out of Scorpio into the sign of Libra. Basically, what happens with that is um, when she moves through Scorpio, she's going through this honest assessment of expression and intensity and connection and intimacy. And when she moves into the sign of Libra, we understand this self. Thank you guys so much for your love and for your support. But honestly, send, like, I love that you love me, but send good vibes to um, anybody that's being an idiot. Um, because they need it. But Venus moving into the sign of Libra, um, what we're seeing is an honest assessment while she was retrograde, an honest reevaluation re of what we want, what we need, what we like, what we love, and then, hold on a second, uh, got it, hi, bueno, 
And then when she moves into the sign of Libra, she understands what is most important to her. She understands what is valuable to her. She understands her boundaries. She understands what she had to let go of, what she had to release, what she wanted to hold on to, what she could invest in, what is important to her, what feels good, what feels excellent, what feels great, what makes her feel like shit. So these are all things that are happening in your life. The other thing too is that um, <laughs> Maddie Cake said, you shut up. <laughs> I love you, Maddie, but I already blocked him. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so Venus moving to the sign of Libra. Now it's like, okay, we've gone through this honest assessment and we've gone through this like deep understanding, this deep transformation of reevaluation process and things getting broken down and things coming together. And now, when Venus is moving to the sign of Libra, this is when we start balancing the scales, literally, because Libra rules the scales. And it's interesting, too, because I was at um, Island of uh, Salvation Botanica in uh, Bywater area, and they have this amazing, um, they have this amazing uh, um, altar to Marie Laveau, and also, um, I don't know who this is, but it's a skull, like it's a altered to the energy of death and death is holding this scale and I'll post it up on my Instagram I did post I did take a picture of it but I did post the Marie Laveau one but I didn't post the, the angel of death and he's holding this scale and it's a scale of balance and to me I looked at that and I was like look you know um the, the actions that you put in, they're, they're, they're being weighed, they're being measured. And as, as your actions continue, time is moving, your time is ticking, time is running out. So this is why you want to make sure that everything that you do is coming from a space of love and light and not anything negative. Because again, you're, they're, these little seeds, these little weights um, are coming in and being you know, put on your scales to ultimately measure out and to balance, you know, balance everything. So during this Scorpio time, um, my mom's encouraging uh, Maddie Cakes. But during the Scorpio time where you're kind of, you know, releasing and experiencing and um, evaluating and uh, taking it to the next level, when, it, when Venus moves into the sign of uh, Libra, what happens is the scales start getting balanced out, meaning like this is what we've experienced, this is what happened, this is what we felt. Now let's go ahead and not enjoy the process, but let's kind of measure it out and make things a little bit more equal so it's not all doom and gloom and heavy and intense all the time. Now we can enjoy each other. Now we can spend time together. Now we can be a little bit more expressive in a way that is more light. Now that's the good thing about Libra is that it does bring in this like light little bit of energy, that in, but the negative side to that is sometimes it can be superficial, sometimes it can be shallow, but we need this right now. Because we just went through, and we have so many planets currently moving to the sign of Scorpio that is so intense and so, like, you know, I want to see your soul. <laughs> like, Scorpio is that person that, like, the energy that just is, like, so intense all the time. And it's good when it's good, but sometimes we need to have a break. Not everything is so heavy all the time. Not everything is black and white. Not everything needs to be a thing. Sometimes it's okay to go out, to enjoy. This past weekend, guess what I did? I rode a bowl. You want to know why? Because my health was restored by the grace of God. <laughs> I make myself laugh. But honestly, by the grace of God, my health was restored. I got over the flu, and then I had a slice of pizza. I went on a bowl. I rode the bowl. I had the time of my life. If you're following me on my personal account, Jessica X Alexandria, you saw me ride the bull. And the, the moral of the story is, why am I saying this? Is because not everything needs to be heavy all the time. I do a lot of energy work. I do a lot of personal transformation. But at the same time, I live my life. And the same thing needs to be happened for you. And you have to find things that make your day enjoyable, that make you laugh, that say, I can't believe I did that. I held on to that bowl for two minutes and like 30-something seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> no, but the reality is that, number one, I didn't want to give up. And number two, I wanted to have a lot of fun. And number three, I felt better. And afterwards, I had to ice my back. I, I honestly think I pulled a muscle in my groin area. Would I do it again? Probably not. I'm 31 years old, and I just wanted to prove my point. 
<laughs> that night that I could still do it. <laughs> and I had to like literally like take a break and tap out because the pizza that I ate before I rode the bowl um, ended up like crinking up into this little like stone in my stomach because they flipped me upside down, which you'd see on my personal Instagram if you saw that, but. Um, yeah, but, um, the moral of the story is, like, you guys, look, I have, um, two minutes left, but full disclosure, the live chat is going to stop, but I'm going to keep it going because we have a lot more to talk about, and there's a message that I want to share with you guys that's intuitive that I wrote down that I wanted to share, and also, I haven't talked to you guys in forever, so once this live chat ends, just feel free to come in and join the next one because we're going to keep it going. I don't want to like stop talking because I don't feel like we've covered enough ground. My energy is back. I haven't talked to you guys in forever, so there's so much that I want to talk about and so much that, okay? So actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and end it now. I'm going to save it, and then I'll come back. Be right back. And if I don't come back, they got me.